Thank you for listening today on Revealing Wholeness, sponsored by Infinity Whole Health. Check out our website at infinitywholehealth.com, where we are revealing the eternal in each individual, the infinite in the individual. The creativity is made manifest. Limitation is let go. Now, here's your host, Dr. Troy Munson. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Troy Munson on Revealing Wholeness. This this is the fifth exercise, and we have two concepts today that we're going to be going through. And I'm just going to come right out with it. This particular lesson is, is really... I am never upset for the reason I think. And I want that to kind of ruminate in your mind a little bit. I am never upset for the reason I think. And what we first want to really hit home is that there are many, many different reasons why we believe that we will become upset or be angered or be fearful or have depression. All these things are upsetting to us, but it, it appears that it'll take many different forms and that they're all different, but they aren't. And so the problem is, is that it, it seems like anything that upsets us will we'll label as a certain thing, but yet every single one of them upsets us. It, it, it really destroys our peace. So the form seems to change, but they all do the same thing. I remember when I was younger, in my 20s, and I started realizing that I was looking around for things that would bother me. You know, I would, I would say, oh, I dropped my keys or, you know, my, my, I ran over some pothole in the road. Uh, my shirt wasn't, had a stain on it. And then by, by the time you get to the fourth or fifth thing, you're starting to think, oh, this is going to be a bad day. My hair didn't go as it should for women or my makeup isn't whatever. Um, that person looked at me wrong. I have a pimple on my face or whatever it is, or I didn't get my favorite parking spot, or I don't know. But we'll look at these things and decide to have a bad day. And as I started getting deeper into this, I started realizing it wasn't the big things that seemed to upset me so much. It was the little things that really upset me. And what I've learned later is that because they all have the same form, it seemed like something so trivial had no business being so upsetting to my peace of mind. And so I made it out to be bigger because it seemed to have just the same volume of the big things until I realized it actually did have the same effect as the big things. But the big things, you know, you kind of said, well, it makes sense that it would upset me. But why would something so tiny like tripping or something or stepping on your shoelace or dropping something on the ground and now you have to bend over oh my gosh you have to bend over to pick up it was ridiculous i thought how insane am i about these little things that tend to tend to upset me and so the first the first concept is is that as we realize that i'm never upset for the reason i think is to start realizing that upsetness tends to look like a lot of different forms but it is not they're all equally disturbing to our peace and so we might use the phraseology for this particular thought today is, I am not angry at, and I'm, I'm going to use a, a generic name. Uh, my father used to use this name when my sister and I would do something and we would say, I don't know, or I didn't do it. The comic strip where it had the little outline character um, that said, not me on it. Um, Family Circus, that's what it was. Family Circus, he'd always draw this little character and it had this little light stenciling across the chest that says, not me, like, he would say, who, who knocked this vase over and broke it? And the kids would say, not me, and not me would be running out of the room. I thought that was pretty creative. But my father would always say, Yehudi. I actually did a, a, a quick look up of Yehudi. Where did it come from? I think it's like Yugoslavia or some European country. I'm like, how did it get in my father's brain? Because we're neither from there nor is he. But anyways, I am not angry at Yehudi for the reason I think. And so if you have somebody specific that you think you are angry at or upset at, you can stick their name in it and that is quite okay to do. If, let's say you're fearful of something, I'm not afraid of check-in for the reason I think, or I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of heights for the reason I think, or whatever it is, you can begin to put there. But I want to start, I want to start doing some practice periods with eyes closed and thinking about things that upset you or dis, really disturb your peace of mind. 
And, and if you sit with just your thoughts long enough, every thought that enters your mind is something that your brain's trying to hand you. Hey, do you want to worry about this? Hey, do you want to think about this? Do you want to be concerned about this? Those are great fodder to start sticking in here and start working with these things. So as we talked about the little things and the big things, there, there really are no small upsets. Everything is equally disturbing to your peace of mind. So as you start ex examining your head for distressing thoughts, we're going to begin really working on those things to begin letting them go. As we get into progressive lessons or exercises, we're going to start understanding why. And so very shortly, we're going to get into the whys. In fact, I believe next time we meet, we will have a why of why this is happening. So as much as you need to do today, maybe two or three, four times maximum would be fine. And then the second half of today's exercise is like the first, but I'm gonna have you kind of tweak it a little bit. After you maybe spend a day or two on the first part, we're gonna have you do, I am upset because I see something that is not there. And so we get upset oftentimes in our own mind because we run to oh, thoughts that we have really no business running to. Um, I have a son that will, I'll see it on his face. He starts to get sad and I'm watching him like, where is your mind going? What are you thinking about? And he starts telling me this litany of stuff that, you know, could possibly happen. And I said, but none of that's true. None of those things are happening. And you're allowing those thoughts in your mind to be sad. And I'll further ask him, are you wanting to be sad? Because it seems like that that's what you're deciding to do. And so as I, as I ask him these questions at a young age, I'm empowering him to realize that I am deciding to think these thoughts and to allow them to change my perception of what really reality is. Because right now, is the other day, he, was, he was, had a bunch of home, homework set ahead of him, and he thought this was going to take him three or four hours and he was not going to get to play with his friends. And I said, tell me what you got to do. He says, well, play piano, practice typing, and something else they had to do. I said, what is it, about 20 minutes each of those things? And he's like, oh, practice chess online. I said, what's it going to take you, 20 minutes apiece? I said, you're talking about an hour. Your friends aren't going to be home for three hours. And do you think they have homework and, and chores they got to do? They're not going to be able to play with you in three hours. They're going to be done in four. You have time to spare. And immediately, when he realized reality of what it was, his total face and countenance changed. And he actually almost had a smile on his face. But his brain and ours all will all do this. We allow it to run to to somewhere that has no business doing and now we think we see something that's real and it's not it's just an illusion so this second part of the lesson I am upset because I see something that is not there and we can alter this as you do some mind searching I am angry at so-and-so because I see something that is not there becomes what it is I am worried about blank because I see something that is not there and so we're gonna start resisting um, also ideas that some things are greater than others. So if you're in your mind searching for really big things and little things come up, do not exclude the little things. Or do not exclude maybe the scary big things that you're facing. I, I don't know what you're facing in your life, but those are things that are all equally important to be using for this particular practice session. So please do that. There are some maybe some helpful things. There are no small upsets can be a nice thing to be able to say. Everything is equally disturbing to my peace, so I let it go. Um, if I choose to keep this form of unhappiness, I can't really give up the other forms either, because we can't keep specialness in illusion, if you will, or in upsetness. So make sure that we don't say, well, I can't do that to this. No, you can do that to this. I, I implore you to do it to those things too. So the next time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into why. Why are we upset? What, what is really happening within our mind? And then beginning to let that go too, because peace and joy and love and gentleness and patience and trust, these are things that we're going for because these are things that are of value. I can tell you that being upset all the time is not valuable. Nobody likes to be upset, although some people have gotten so used to it that they do, but they really don't. Everybody in their right mind would choose happiness over upsetness any day of the week. So until next time, I'm Dr. Troy Munson on Revealing Wholeness.
This concludes another episode of Revealing Wholeness with Dr. Troy Munson. If you have any questions concerning this podcast or others, you can reach Dr. Munson by email at chiroman, that's C-H-I-R-O man, at dr dot com. Or you can call him at his office during office operation hours at 360-893-8586. This show is sponsored by Infinity Whole Health on the Disruptors Podcast Network. 